and welcome to the episode 188 of What A Fab Day. I am your host, Simon Mas. Prominent on our menu today, there are a birthday, the end of a residency, and the start of the work on Here Comes the Sun. On the 7th of July 1940, Richard Starkey, better known with his stage name of Ringo Starr, was born in Dingle, Liverpool. His father, Richard Starkey, confusing, I know, was a confectioner, and his mother, Elsie, was a housewife. They were both passionate about music and dancing, a hobby that they had to abandon after the birth of Richie. This, and Elsie's overprotective attitude toward her child, ended up estranging Richard Senior from his family. Soon, he got a divorce and disappeared from the life of his son, allowing Elsie to remarry. Richie was often sick as a child, suffering from appendicitis and peritonitis, even falling into a coma as a consequence of his illness. Apart from spending a long time in hospitals, the recovery meant that Richard fell behind in school, remaining illiterate until 8 or 9. When 13, he got tuberculosis and lost two more years in a sanatorium, where he joined a hospital band. The rest, as they say, is history. Twenty years later, in 1960, the Silver Beatles performed their final night at the Institute in Wirral, England. It was the sixth Thursday concert since the beginning of that June. The band featured George Harrison, John Lennon and Paul McCartney on guitar and voice, and Stu Sutcliffe on bass. In 1962, the Beatles, now with Pete Best on drums and Paul McCartney on bass, performed at the Halm Hall in Port Sunlight, England. The venue had been built in 1888 by Viscount Leverholm to provide entertainment for the workers at his soap factory. In 1962, the soap factory had become part of the Unilever multinational business and the event, attended by some 500 people, despite the hall had an official capacity of just 450, was organized by the local golf club. In 1963, with Ringo having taken the place of Pete Best on drums, the Beatles played the ABC Theatre in Blackpool. On the 7th of July 1964, the Beatles were at the Lime Grove Studios in London to tape a mimed performance of A Hard Day's Night, Things We Said Today and Long Tall Sally to promote their new single and their new EP. The band was busy with camera rehearsals and the actual filming between 2 and 5 pm. A Hard Day's Night and Long Tall Sally were aired on BBC One for the 8th of July show of Top of the Pops, between 7.35 and 8 pm. Things We Said Today, instead, was broadcast on the 29th of July show of Top of the Pops, between 7.10 and 7.35 pm. When this miming work was completed, the band was driven at the Rediffusion's television house, where they taped an interview discussing the A Hard Day's Night film. The interview was broadcast later in the evening for scene at 6.30, between 6.30 and 7 pm. In addition, John Lennon recorded an interview with enemy editor Chris Hutchkins about the film, later aired by BBC Radio on the 9th of July, between 9.30 and 10 pm, during the teen scene programme. In 1966, the Fab Four's hotel in New Delhi, the Oberoi, was under siege by a crowd of fans. This was not the trip of India they had envisioned. They only managed to go sightseeing when they escaped from a rear exit of the hotel. In the Beatles anthology book, Ringo Starr recalls their time shopping. We were offered huge pieces of ivory carvings and we thought it was all too expensive. Huge chess pieces, which would now be antiques and worth fortunes. But I'm glad we didn't buy it. Even in those days, we were thinking not to buy ivory. 
Each Beatle ended up buying a traditional Indian instrument from a local music shop called Ricky Ram and Sons. Tired of the public attention, later in the day the band took a flight to return to London. You instead might be tired of hearing me yapping about support, but really, I just have to keep on reminding you. Head to www.simonmas.com support, read the info, and just do something. Tell all of your friends. Send me money to buy fake ivory chess pieces. Save the elephants. Drop me a line to tell me what you like about the podcast so far. You can do it. Show me how fab you are. Thank you. One year later, on the 7th of July 1967, the Beatles' 15th single, All You Need Is Love, was issued in UK. Recorded in part during the Our World satellite broadcast, check episode 176 of What A Fab Day for more information on that, the song was a hit all over the world, spending 13 weeks in the UK charts alone. Finally, in 1969, George Harrison, Paul McCartney and Ringo Starr worked at the EMI Studio 2 between 2.30 and 10.45 pm. They focused on Here Comes the Sun, a Harrison original, recording 13 takes of the rhythm track. George remained until 11.45 pm, recording a replacement acoustic guitar part for the basic track. In the meantime, John Lennon and Yoko Ono had returned home from Scotland, after their car crash happened on the 1st of July, but John decided to have a couple more days of rest before rejoining the band. Why? Here comes the end of another episode of What A Fab Day. See you tomorrow for more stories from the four you love. For the moment, I wish you a good day and a fab continuation. Simon Mas, music you love.